Chapter 7 I awoke to the sound of snoring and noticed Bilbo was awake too. We were not used to a large group of people and the fact that I was a light sleeper didn't help. Can't sleep? He asked me quietly, trying not to wake the sleeping dwarves. However something told me no matter how loud we talked it would not stir them. It's a much different atmosphere than Bag End, I told him, looking down at my feet. He nodded and stood up, gesturing for me to follow. We walked over to where some of the other dwarves were. Five others were awake, one being Philly who smiled at me. I sat down beside him and looked around at the others who were awake. Keeley, Balin, Dwin, and Thorin were also awake and, as per usual, Thorin paid me no mind as I joined them. Bilbo walked off to feed Pony and I chose to stay with the others. They seemed nice and I wanted to get to know them better. Suddenly the land below the cliff top erupted with a series of shrieks. What was that? I asked, whipping my head around frantically. Orcs. Keeley responded coolly. Orcs? I asked with fear and confusion. I looked over at Thorin who was looking carefully over the cliff at the noise. He didn't turn around to ease our minds. If anything, he looked entertained by my fear. Throat cutters. There'll be dozens of them out there. The lowlands are crawling with them, Philly said from beside me, nudging me a bit when I turned to him in fear. Bilbo had returned and took a place on my other side. They strike, in the wee small hours, when everyone's asleep. Quick and quiet. No screams. Just lots of blood. Keeley finished and looked to his brother before they the both broke out in a fit of snickers. You think that's funny? You think a night raid by orcs is a joke? Thorin asked sternly, glaring at them. We didn't mean anything by it, Keeley said apologetically, looking down at the ground and pushing dirt around with his foot. Of course you didn't. You know nothing of the world. Thorin told them before walking off. I wanted to say something but Thorin's anger as well as the look of death at the two brothers told me I was better off staying quietly in my seat. Bilbo looked at me and I gave him a shrug as if it say, don't ask me. Don't mind him lass. Thorin has more cause to hate talker than most, Balin said. He went on to tell me of the battle that happened after the Lonely Mountain was taken. How the dwarves had gone to seek refuge in Moria but were outnumbered by thousands of orcs. He spoke of the pale orc, an orc's bigger and more fierce than any who had come before it. This orc was out for blood and wanted to kill off the oaken-shelled bloodline. He started with beheading the king, Thorin's grandfather, before coming after Thorin himself. Thorin carried only an oak branch as a shield and at the last minute was able to cut off his arm, driving him back into the hole where he came. He spoke of the aftermath. The loss they experienced and how Thorin proved himself that day to be someone that could lead the rest of them back home. And I thought to myself then, there is one who I could follow. Balin finished, there was one I could call king. Thorin walked over at the end of the tale and the others, who had awoken at the sound of orcs, stood up in respect. I stood up too, pulling Bilbo up with me and walking a bit closer to Thorin. He caught my eye and held his gaze for a short while. And the we were, back to this game we had been playing in Bag End. And the pale orc? I asked him, trying to keep his gaze. He slunk back into the hole whence he came. That filth died of his wounds long ago. Thorin said, hate dripping off his words. He looked at me for only a moment longer before turning away and heading towards the forest behind us. I looked down at the ground, trying to calm the butterflies that were growing in my stomach. A jerk like him did not deserve to be causing the reaction he was. I looked over at Boffer who was standing to one side of me and he gave me half a smirk. He nodded his head towards one of the overhangs and I followed him. I saw that, he told me. Saw what? I don't know what you're talking about, I responded, not meeting his gaze. He is a hurt man Yen. He has been broken and betrayed by most everyone he has cared for and loved. He won't trust easy and if, when trust does come, 
it may not be everything you had hoped for. I don't know what you mean. He has the company. How could everyone have betrayed him? It started with his mother. When the dragon hit, his grandfather, King Thra, abandoned everyone to try and save his gold from Smog. One of these people included Thorin's mother, Botha lowered his voice as to not be overheard by those around us. Lord only knows what Thorin would do if he knew Botha was telling me this. She died in the dragon fire. Thorin could not save her and threw her at the same time. It is believed that if Thra tried to save her instead of his gold, she might still be alive. The next was his father. During the battle for Moria, Thorin's further took off after Thra was beheaded leaving Thorin alone. His sister left him and refused to help him on this quest. His whole family has been lost. Keely and Philly are the only ones left that believe in him. Buffa sighed and put his hand on my shoulder. I looked behind me at Thorin who had come out of the woods and was now listening to Balan discuss fighting strategies. Many have tried to fight for his heart you know, Buffa said, immediately grabbing my attention. I am not fighting for his heart. I just think he shouldn't have to believe that everyone is out to get him. I want to help, that is why I am here. I am way past the point of no return and like it or not, I am stuck here. I am not interested in his heart, I am interested in some form of companionship. I looked up at Boffer, I just want him to stop hating me and realize that if I didn't say yes, neither would Bilbo, and then you would all be shit out of luck. Boffer laughed and put his arm around my shoulder, whipping me around to face Thorin who was absent-mindedly staring at the two of us. Thorin quickly looked back at the ground and Boffer leaned in closer to me. Trust me, I don't think he hates you lass. I felt my cheeks heat up and I let Boffer lead me towards some sleeping bags. I would give Thorin the benefit of the doubt. I felt like I knew him a bit more and maybe he deserved a chance, even if he was kind of an ass. Bilbo walked over towards Boffer and I before laying down in the sleeping bag beside mine. What was that all about? He whispered, gesturing with his head towards Boffer. Oh nothing, I'm just getting to know everyone a bit more. I gave him a small smile before turning over. I think it's time we all get some rest. Gandalf told us, urging the remaining dwarves towards their sleeping bags. He looked down below the cliffs, Lord known we'll need it. I'm glad you enjoyed that video slash gameplay. Just remember to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below. Until next time, goodbye!